Hello, all you out there. This is the Stuttering Movie Nerd, and uh, I am here to bring you, of course, another film review. This review, um, it's the beginning of the year. I haven't really seen that many really good pictures that are really worth reviewing. I could start with my own library of 200 plus, but uh, that would mean I have to go up and get them, and then put them in the player, and then watch them. And uh, I didn't feel like doing that this time. It's February. But, I did happen to uh, notice this little gem, based off of a very popular comic book series in the previous decade, by Grant Morrison and Frank Quitely, All-Star Superman. That's right, the latest of the Warner Premiere DC animated movies. Yet another Superman title. But does it stack well to the others? Well, the plot is basically the same with the comic book. If you haven't read the comic book, well, I would suggest you probably read that one first to get a better understanding of some of the secondary characters that are in this picture. But other than that, alright, here's the plot. After sabotaging a sun mission, that's right, scientists are going to the sun to harvest energy to benefit mankind. Knowing Superman will undoubtedly rescue these people, he sabotages the mission using an android of some kind to uh, destroy the shuttle. Actually, it looks like a ball. Well, anyway, Superman intervenes, stops the creature, throws it into the sun, and in the process of rescuing these people, his, he's got new powers by like, making a net of his own uh, bioelectric algorithms or, or whatever. I'm not going to go in technical about it. And as he's finished with that and takes them to, this ba to their base, which is probably on Earth's moon, it's, it's not really important, they run a few tests and uh, give him the bad news. Superman is dying. That's right. The very energy levels from the sun, the solar radiation that powers his cellular structure is breaking down and it's killing him due to an overload. Ironic. So he decides he's going to do whatever he wants to do with the rest of his life. He's only got a few weeks, months, whatever to live, so he's going to really live his life to the fullest. Just do whatever he wants to do. So he reveals himself to Lois Lane that Clark Kent and Superman are one of the same. Takes her to the Fortress of Solitude where he in fact makes up a super costume will um uh, stone together from indestructible threads and uh gives her a golden serum which would turn her into a super hero for 24 hours or so. And that's his birthday present to her. Very romantic, if I do say so myself. It's a very, very nice gesture. Gives her the chance to really feel, really be what it's like to have the super hearing, the super strength, the super vision, the, the super breath, the heat vision, uh, the indestructible strength, the ability to fly, yet all the weights of the world just right on it. Or, you just have fun. And that's what they choose to do. They run into a few secondary characters along the way. Atlas and Samson, which are intergalactic, uh, time travelers, interplanetary. I don't know. I don't really care about those secondary characters. They only show up for a few minutes. It's confusing as hell. Whatever. Moving on. Lex Luthor, who is now arrested for crimes against mankind, mainly the whole sun thing, is being interviewed by Clark Kent. And where it's revealed that the reason why Lex Luthor wants to kill Superman is because not that Superman's better than everybody, it's just the fact that 
Superman is the peak. Everyone knows, notices Superman. You could be the smartest person in the world. You could be the strongest person in the world. You could be the most wealthy. But you got a guy in blue tights, zipping around, saving people, holding up trains, and sending lizard beings back to the center of the earth. You're going to take center stage. You're not taking center stage. You're pushed to uh, understudy. And he doesn't like that. So he feels that he can save the world from itself by eliminating Superman. It's actually pretty cool. You actually sympathize with him. I mean, really, if you had a girlfriend, or you were a very powerful figure, and then all of a sudden someone just swoops out of the sky, happens to save a shuttle, and then everyone loves him and pushes you away, wouldn't you feel a little jealous? Wouldn't you want to con construct some sort of revenge plan? I know I would. And he says this to Clark Kent. He says, you know, look at you. Farm boy, mild-mannered, very courteous, except for that whole, you know, stumbling over yourself. You know, you are a real catch. And it's really too bad about, you know, this whole uh, Superman thing. Maybe Lois would have noticed you and not him. So, Lex Luthor, his master plan isn't done yet. Oh, it wasn't just enough to finally kill him. In an ironic twist, he wants to become a Superman. So he steals the formula, drinks it down himself, and he becomes a metahuman. So now Superman, who is dying and coming to grips with all of this, He's got to take on Lex Luthor as a super being. I'm not going to give it away. But let's just say that besides the supporting characters that really have nothing to do with the plot whatsoever, it's just filler. They took a 12-issue maxi series and condensed it into 75 minutes. I don't know why that's 75 minutes. Every picture has got to be 75 minutes. This is easily a two-hour picture, and if they really want to do a Superman picture right, do it this way. Th this would be the perfect way to do another live-action Superman film. All-Star Superman is the way to go. Now, there are some things about this picture I didn't like, and I've already gone over the supporting characters that really make no sense. Well, some of the voice acting just didn't mesh. Particularly Anthony LaPaglia. Anthony LaPaglia is, of course, Lex Luthor. But there are, and he plays him really well. Very sinister. Uh, very, he's very threatening in the role. But there are some certain scenes, especially in the courthouse, where it seems like he's dropping his accent a little bit and overemphasizing some words. It's pretty much laughable. But other than that, it's solid. James Denton is phenomenal as Superman. The whole Frank Morrison thing, where he just took Superman back to his roots, where he was just this laid-back person that liked to beat the hell out of people and save the world. Except for beating the living hell out of people, we forget that. But this is a man who was based virtually indestructible, nothing could harm him, and all throughout the 90s and the 2000s, he had this evil grimace upon his face, like when he was getting struck by lightning. He basically took one comic image, him getting struck by lightning from the 1940s, and he speech bubble that says, it tickles. And that's how he based Superman upon it. And it was brilliant! Plus you give him the little problems. He's only going to be here for a couple of weeks, he's going to do whatever he wants. You got Lois Lane who wants, you know, to be in this relationship with him, and he knows it's not going to happen. So he's got to deal with that. He's hiding everything from everybody. Meanwhile, it's one crisis after another that he's got to deal with. And it takes a toll on the big guy. And it's very, very well here. Another thing I didn't like about the picture, Lois Lane. Hated her. Did not think that whatever actress they chose, 
doesn't say. But whatever actress they chose, she wasn't right for the role. I expected someone more strong and determined. I didn't expect some sort of whiny brat in the role of Lois Lane. I'm sorry. She may be a good actress. She just wasn't a fit here. She wasn't. But other than that, the picture was good. Does it compare to my previous reviews? Or re re review? Um, um, it's definitely better than Superman and Batman Apocalypse. But is it better than Batman Under the Red Hood? No. It's not. Batman Under the Red Hood is my all-time favorite. Not just because I'm a Batman fan, but because it is. It tied up all the lo it tied up everything from a five issue story, condensed it, but still made it accessible to anybody, not just fans. All Star Superman didn't really do that. To a casual viewer, some things are gonna be confusing. And mostly the filler scenes with the with the Kryptonian outcasts that come in and the uh, Samson and Atlas. But other than that, it's a very enjoyable picture, very satisfying ending, pretty much in the Greek mythology, how it ends. But I'm not going to give too much away, because I want you all to see it. If I was to do some sort of star rating, you know, five star, it'll get a three and a half. Four star, three. But other than that, I would suggest, if you're a Superman fan, if you're a DC Animated Universe fan, if you're just a casual, you know, comic book fan that just would see this and kind of like, you know, glance over it, rent it. Die Hard fans are going to buy it no matter what, but if you're just a casual fan, just rent it. it it's, it's, a, it's a good rental. For Die Hard fans, it would definitely be one to, to keep in their collections. It is the best Superman Animated Universe movie so far. Public Enemies, meh. Doomsday, ugh. Apocalypse, ooh. And those are my uh, 12 and a half minutes, I guess. So, before I start on rambling even further, see it.